Since its launch, the Trinity 2 has made an incredible impression on the film and television industry, encouraging creativity, flexibility and efficiency on set. Now it's time to make another major step with a new tool that expands the creative offering of all Trinity 2 users, helping them to bring more value to productions. Let me introduce to you the new Trinity Pawn Axis. Amazing, isn't it? And the best thing of this is the head will always reach precisely the desired position you programmed in before, every time you hit the knob. All right, so the Pan Axis technically contains three elements. The Pan Axis module, a brand new remote control panel system, which is very modular, and a new user interface. Let's start with the design. So as you can see, the Pan Axis is a very, very compact design. It contains a powerful pan motor with a lot of extra torque. The weight of the pan axis is 4.4 kilograms, which is 9.7 pounds, which will enable you even to use this device as a handheld device. You can also see the pan axis design follows the shape of the Trinity head, which makes it easy to move the Trinity head off the Trinity and put it into the pan axis. In total, you have to connect three cables. One of the cables you know very, very well because this is the main cable of your Trinity system. The second cable is right over here. So this is the communication cable from the Trinity head into the pan axis. And the third cable in our setup is the communication cable, the FS CAN bus cable. On top of this, the junction box at the front also offers video out and extra power outlets to power a video transmitter. Now let me walk you through the setup step by step. So first we're gonna place the pan axis, make sure the location pin is at the right position. Lock the castle nut and really make sure it's really tight. Now in the next step, we place the head. Orientation is quite simple. The bubble is above the hook. Then use a five millimeter Allen key to tighten the screws. And the best is you go crosswise. That means let's, let's start with the one here at the back. The next is the one at the front. And we take this one at the back. And finally, we tighten the next one at the front. Once all screws are in, take the short side of the hex key and finally tighten all four screws. Because if one of the screws is loose, vibration will occur. Now we connect the cables. Number one is power and communication for the pan motor. Then we connect communication for the RCP. We connect our main cable. And finally we connect power. I'm gonna switch on the rig. And here we are in less than three minutes. I would say it's not bad. Now let's talk about the new modular remote control panel. So what we did is we are using a no tool quick lock Mitchell mount system. And on top we place two clamps for 90 millimeter rods. So the idea now is we're using the same clamp mechanism we are using on the Trinity to mount the batteries now to mount all your controllers. So in this, way, this is the new joystick, 
which got a huge area down here, so you can use it easily left hand or right hand. You can also use two of the joysticks if you like. The joystick itself is what we call the so-called broadcast joystick. Of course, it does tilt and pan, but on top of this, when you rotate the upper part of the joystick, you can assign this to roll or zoom. And also on top, you find this little knob, which allows you to assign any kind of a pre-programmed function, like to reach home position. So beside the joystick, we will find this new box, which is a chuck wheel box. It's in, as you can see, it contains three chuck wheels. That means we have, uh, we can turn it, so we can assign value changes, and we can push it to assign functions like limits on, limits off, home position, true roll, whatever. You can also use two of the boxes to have more assignable knobs. And as you can see, everything runs on L bus, everything is daisy chained. Below the joystick, we already prepared the things for the wireless setup. So this is our external radio modules. And at the back, we have the SSP6 bracket and the same 90 millimeter clamp system. And on our left side, we're using the same clamp and the battery mounts you already know from the Trinity, but this doesn't contain any cable. That means the battery will power everything through DTAP. And above the battery, you see our monitor bracket, which is a kind of improvised because we're just using parts we can find at the RE rental. The only thing you need is a 90 millimeter clamp bridge to mount the monitor. But of course, the core element of all this is your RCP free from the Trinity. So the only difference we do here is we're moving the clamp from this position into this position, because that's the only way to place the RCP on top of the 90 millimeter rods. So what you should do before you put it there, you should connect the cables. So in our case, we're connecting FSCAN for communication and LBUS for our controllers. Then as always, we push power on button for three seconds. The system will boot up. Then we wait a little bit till the RCP had been connected to the Trinity power axis and the head. And once this is done, we can push a pre-assigned knob and we will get again and again the same movement we programmed in at first. Now, the third component of the new Trinity power axis is the user interface, which is brand new. I will just give you a slight preview because we're going to produce a special tech talk only about the user interface. Well, the general design you're used to as a Trinity 2 operator, but because now we have a pan axis, we had to redesign this to have more space for the pan axis column here on the left side. So the other idea of the new layout is that all the informations are on a single page. So like here on the axis setup, you can always see the other two axes. So there's no need to remember any of the values because you can see them anyway. We also try to keep the same layout on Focus Iris Zoom and on the PID pages. So the idea is you can use, in the end, a lot of muscle memory to do faster setups. But as I said before, we're going to make our own tech talk to show you how the functions are working and how you can program user programs yourself. Now, the reason why I show you this movement again and again is just to prove that we can reach the desired angles we programmed in before precisely again and again and again. And the reason why? Because we don't have any drift anymore. Now, the other biggest question I know you ask me is, how many times can we turn the pan axis safely in the same direction? Now, let's see. three times. So in total, we can do six turns. You may try to go even four times, but if you go more than three times, please do it slowly and carefully and make sure you have enough clearance below the Mitchell mount that the main cable can walk and follow the spin. So 
I hope you really enjoyed this very exciting tech talk and I want you to watch the next tech talk when we're going to talk about the new user interface. So see you soon.